Uh, this is very much just a sort of run through of all the HRAs, uh, all that goes into it and all that comes out of it. So it you know, inspires you to um, you know, find out more from us um, and utilize us in uh, whatever way uh, you feel is apt. Our definition um, that we are the most comprehensive record of archaeological sites, finds, and historic monuments within the administrative county of Surrey. Um, and well, comprehensive is relative, it's been truly comprehensive. Um, we've been at it longer and have a sort of broader remit in terms of the data that uh, goes into the HR than any other database out there. So, in that sense, more comprehensive than. Um, than the others, uh, or are complementary to them in many regards. So very much, uh, I'd say, a fairly necessary protocol for sort of research purposes and uh, other things uh, to boot. Quick little history lesson that some of you are probably, you know, even more familiar with than I am. Um, it began like the Sites and Monuments Record and the Archaeological Society that had a role in this. Um, so I was established the SMR, the Surrey back in 1972 using uh, earlier OS uh, artificial division record cards, uh, such as the one you see down the bottom there. Um, and in a way that kind of shows you, you know, how things start and sort of level of details. Some of the early records, and we'll still see this uh, through the present day, um, they haven't been sort of changed since. So they sort of read a little more kind of like telegrams than uh, sort of continuous prose. Um, it's been at house at Surrey County Council since uh, 1979, uh, although it took uh, 20 years to appoint a dedicated officer on a part-time basis uh, to run the uh, Surrey so Monument Record. 2007 was when we became the HER, um, more than second uh, at that time, as well as augmenting uh, content of our database. Um, so you know, not just archaeology, but uh, historic buildings and so forth. Um, and this is also kind of a period in which we um, went from card-based index onto a uh, computerized database, um, luckily something called Relics, and from uh, 2015, I think it was, we shifted to the uh, industry standard uh, HPSMR, um, Microsoft-based uh, platform. Um, also, 2009, we saw the launch of Exploring Surrey's Past, which uh, HDR data uh, was an integral part as it remains to this day. And uh, some of you may be aware that we recently updated our data set on there, uh, almost doubling it in size. So, what's in the HER? I mean, an awful lot. We have over 100,000 uh, records of all stripes uh, on uh, within the database, and that's um, not counting uh, some physical resources, some of which are represented in uh, the digital format as well. Others are sort of supporting uh, reference materials and uh, uncatalogued items awaiting entry uh, to the database. Um, just a quick run through of like the main types we have, uh, beginning with monuments. Uh, so these are sort of the features, um, from excavated remains to earthworks, uh, to routeways, such as is shown uh, on the right hand side of the slide there. And we have um, find spots, uh, many of which are sort of predating the political antiquity schemes, so they're very useful for the source of the same information, but it won't be otherwise available uh, online. Um, listed buildings, um, we have that uh, as a data set that's somewhat controversial um, insofar as um, it also exists in a separate data set. I won't go down too much into why that is, but um, certainly we have um, our records often have kind of a greater depth and a range of supporting source material behind them. Local listed buildings you'll hear about uh, in due course. Um, it's a fast growing data set within, uh, within the monuments side of the HER. Um, other buildings, parks and gardens, negative evidence um, can build work to round it off. Events uh, covers any kind of not only field work, but also interpretive desk based work and post observation work. Uh, likewise, um, we split it three ways. Um, and this kind of tallies very much what Nick has just been saying about the um, various forms of work that take place. So, the interventions from 
the large scale excavations lead to small scale watching groups, surveys, be that magnetometry, earthwork surveys, and the building accordion, and uh, interpretations, which we um, rank here as everything from sort of initial best based assessments and also heritage statements um, regarding uh, listed buildings and other um, standing built heritage assets um, in the planning system for you to, to see that post excavation analysis. How we rank an event, it's not just going out walking the building, finding um, an interesting artifact. It very much is something that has to be planned, um, structured and formal, and also reported. We need to kind of have that as the um, supporting evidence, which forms a source and a source record, at least one, if not more, should underpin all um, monuments and event records uh, within our database. Um, it gives them the authority. It's not just something essentially made up. Um, it's sort of there as an independent reference point um, to sort of corroborate the information that's in the HR. And finds records, uh, another type of um, supporting uh, record for um, particularly for uh, monuments. And this is really where we can sort of place greater, um, more detailed information about uh, artifacts found in the course of whatever work it may have been or a fine spot, you know, allow things like the dimensions or, um, which I put down here, pottery fabric types, and I'll make great use of the sorry, medieval pottery uh, type series um, guides. We're trying to incorporate that as much as I can for um, medieval ceramic find spots and find records. Um, so it's, uh, but that a lot you might not see that kind of say in our exploring Surrey's past data set because that would be lying outside of those records within uh, the finds data. Uh, we say designated heritage assets. These are um, assets that are recorded on the uh, National Historic List um, Heritage List for England, uh, maintained by Historic England. So on that you will have listed buildings, several monuments, registered parks and gardens. Um, that data set is something that we, uh, we amend as best and often as we can. Um, certainly we're consulted uh, on all uh, closed designations uh, with that new, um, new assets being added to the list or um, amendments to existing list entries. Those are major amendments, minor amendments, changes of name, with reference and so forth. Uh, they are something that uh, we input into the system that unfortunately don't always get notification of where we are very much working on having uh, greater communication of those from historic England. You've heard about CSAIs and AHAPs, I won't belabor the point, I would say they are one of our area-based data sets uh, on the HR, more so on the GIS side, as we said, uh, along with conservation areas, so CSAIs and so forth described defined by SCC, whereas conservation areas are um, those uh, um, created uh, by the uh, boroughs and districts in the county. And also we have a historic landscape characterization, well carried out for the best part of 20 years ago now, but uh, what remains um, for some pieces of work in particular quite a useful um, supplementary data set. So what goes into the HR? What is all these things that are in our database, what are they that come under those various records? How do we create our records? Um, so reports, and by reports, I mean everything from those best based assessments through to um, post excavation. But this is the grey literature uh, that's often talked about. Um, you see that just a snapshot of our old grey literature library in our former office. Um, very much at the heart of what we do. In no small measure because um, so much of uh, so many of those reports, parts of them are based upon HR data and sort of the, what we'd like to think has been the enrichment of that data they take so from us, add value um, through work, and then in return we get back uh, reports uh, that we then add further information to uh, the HR. Um, Formerly hard copy in recent years, and especially in the past couple of years, COVID and remote working, we've shifted to a digital first um, model, which uh, is currently involving a project to uh, 
digitize all of our biography reports where we can't uh, obtain them by some other means uh, in soft copy. Um, for us, it means um, very much more easily ready access if you're not uh, in the office um, using them. Um, you have to just pull them from the shelves. Publications um, stretching from you know, the monographs through to the short journal articles and notes. Um, just that one on the left of your screen there, the report on the artworks of Henry Wood. Something I picked up, it's probably the most recently added source to the HCR. Um, something I found in the History, in the History Center on Tuesday that um, reports some 1911 excavations from uh, the scheduled enclosure in Henry Wood in the far east of the county um, in 1911. Lovely little uh, publication. It was, again, lots of society publications, but also um, work done by, as you see uh, on this slide, by organisations such as the World and Ireland Research Group. Uh, and then we have just ad hoc correspondence um, communications from uh, members of the public. Uh, it can be about all sorts of things. On, Screen, I've instanced a uh, prehistoric thin axe, uh, a wonderful undated at the present time uh, enclosure crop mark uh, in the Cranley area, and uh, a tramway in the Red Hill area that um, appears to be from some kind of the early 20th century industrial site, very mysterious, all of which hitherto unknown on the HR. Um, and we were sort of the first port of call for people to kind of notify. Um, the authorities, so to speak, of, of their existence. So we've added the database, and this also spurs us to, to do more work, kind of try and understand what these things are, and you know, by then telling that to the, the correspondent and also to add value in the process. Of course, uh, the society has its LIDAR portal, so I won't go into much detail about um, you know, the great joys of LIDAR and the new sites that we've been able to identify using them, using this uh, type of data. Um, we have not only an Environment Agency, National Survey data, present time incomplete for the whole county, um, but soon hopefully will be uh, full coverage. We also have uh, the data sets from covering the entirety of Surrey and Borough, and also the uh, Kent LIDAR tiles just over the eastern county boundary uh, into the Lynchfield area. Aerial photos, possibly not so informative in Surrey as in other parts, the development in woodland and so on and so forth, but we have uh, extensive holdings um, in digitized format as well as a few um, printed versions uh, for uh, parts of the county, the entire county from uh, 1948 through to years ago. Um, again, sometimes these are useful just for going back in time when someone has identified a new site, such as some slides ago. Um, we can then go back and check if that um, feature got marked with touch mark manifests on earlier things that this has gone unnoticed or possibly are we looking at something more ephemeral. Historic maps, we have uh, an array of uh, printed maps, uh, also digitized versions of what's uh, mid 18th century county survey. Um, there are as many tithe maps um, as exist for the parishes in the present Minister County, um, the sort of middle of the 19th century, and uh, the full coverage of the uh, 1 to 20, the 25 inch OS first edition of uh, the late 1860s, early 1870s. I was asked as part of uh, the preparations of this to do, uh, just highlight scheduled monument condition reports. It's a very uh, venerable and very useful scheme um, that the society uh, operates and um, comes through to us. Primarily, the, as Tony and Nick have said, um, scheduled monuments are the primary concern of historic England. But obviously, they also have uh, great interest uh, to, to us as you know, things. Uh, of which are the subjects of um, our data, some of our database entries. So um, you know, for our purposes, they just uh, allow us to um, gain almost like an annual or regular snapshot of things otherwise won't be seen um, 
or information uh, about them obtained um, on a, for decades, perhaps. So uh, we log all that information. So those are some supporting sources. We can you know, build up a picture uh, of you know, continuity over time or what, you know, in some cases, uh, change over time uh, to those monuments. Now, I will say it's very important this, as a point is that we, we have a backlog. Um, we aren't sort of bang up to date with absolutely everything. This is not an unusual tool for an HCR. Um, very few don't run a backlog. Ours is probably spectacularly average in terms of its size uh, and the nature. So as it says at the bottom there, it's quantified and it's prioritized and it's being worked on every day that we uh, are at work. Um, so you know, this sort of may not sort of diminish to nothing uh, immediately. It's, certainly not growing in size. Um, because we prioritize things, we don't add records to order, um, particularly when it comes to things like planning application, uh, objections and other urgent causes. Um, customers may, may wish for us to uh, add stuff onto that, so the potential heft to the um, entry on the HR can provide to an undesignated heritage asset. Um, Unfortunately, you know, we have to balance that um, A with impartiality and B with just you know, how much of a priority in the wider scheme of things um, this is in terms of what new knowledge is this adding to uh, the HR over and above uh, other things change for say field work or uh, publication of uh, older research. Uh, although there may be sound curatorial reasons for uh, adding data. You know, and what comes out of the HCR, this not necessarily is a machine as such, but you know, so things go in and things come out. Um, and there's a plethora of things it can be. I mean, you see here a photograph of allotment, um, which was something that um, I uh, put on social media a few years ago. And uh, the allotment association, so, oh, we'd like copies of those. Unfortunately, they were all packed up uh, when we moved um, office and still yet to locate them, but um, as and when uh, we do lay our hands on them again, then uh, they will be getting those things. That's a sort of slightly unusual archival um, example, but standardly, um, a customer of the HL will receive uh, a PDF format report from HBSMR with the text of the, uh, the record, records more often than not they uh, are interested in, and we can run up reports that go to literally thousands of pages if you, if you like, but you know, we can make them more manageable in size um, by sort of subdividing them by, by type and sort of appearing perhaps. Or, you know, there's very many ways of going about um, doing so. And so going down, for example, here, which is a real life example, not done not so long ago, of uh, bronze age personal ornaments. Um, uh, provide a small data set to uh, a researcher for GIS data for those that uh, use uh, geographic information systems. We can provide uh, shape files, layer files um, for um, use manipulation, uh, or for those who uh, don't want to or can't use uh, GIS, then we can also produce PDF maps. Uh, either just single data types or combining uh, multiple ones. You know, sort of paint a picture of, you know, in this case, this is the Ashford Roman Villa and Tile Works site and all the various um, uh, spatial data um, and the records underlying that we, uh, we have um, for that particular scheduled monument and uh, monuments, I should say, and environments. And who are our customers? Well, uh, it can probably come no surprise having heard Nick's presentation that the bulk of our customers uh, at the HR are commercial in nature, so professional market units, consultants, um, you know, anyone sort of involved in a uh, planning process, um, so housing, infrastructure projects. Um, you see there uh, one of the big just outside of Surrey airports and um, an aero photo um, map I produced uh, for a uh, consultant working on that, but again, going right down to small house extensions 
um, you know, anything that has been deemed to have a sufficient potential archaeological impact, um, we can provide the data in order for um, someone to understand um, you know, the, the impact and the, the threat to, to archaeology and um, work and assessment and so forth from there. Professional customers as a heading is a very broad category, runs from you know, college within this historic environment planning team um, and other parts of Surrey County Council, uh, through to other local authorities, people like the planning departments, uh, national or local government bodies, for example, uh, Scotland England, and uh, also parish councils, um, neighbourhood plans, uh, are a thing that in particular um, parish councils uh, are heavily involved in, and some in particular uh, pay keen attention to uh, heritage assets uh, within uh, parish bounds, and so we work with them to produce data sets that really can help them to, to understand what's there and what um, value it may have. Academic researchers um, from big national research projects. Um, this is something I'm really particularly keen to, to work on, which helps to elevate the profile of Surrey's archaeological resource uh, at a sort of regional or national level. So I do like to really engage with those projects. Um, also, particularly postgraduate research students, university students more broadly, um, come to us um, for a dissertation or you know, project-based purposes, um, a specific theme, and even down to school pupils, um, you know, helping with a piece of homework. Um, we, we can do it all. That map there at the foot of the slide, uh, you may recognise from a recent collections article um, by academic researchers at Reading, but on the Neolithic period within Surrey. Local researchers too, and obviously many um, who are members of the Surrey Archaeological Society, um, so both groups and individual members um, undertaking research and, and really do try and um, provide as much support and information as we can uh, to them to help with their, their projects. And likewise, local museums uh, and other county level groups or special interest groups uh, instituting the Surrey Gardens Trust. There's a nice example of uh, a, a garden named Windycroft in the Godalming area, which we identified uh, through mapping as a house uh, named Pont Hill, changed its name very soon after yeah, it was, uh, the garden was created and published. So we're able to kind of identify quite where that was. And it wasn't quite in the location of the book, so it's good to, good to have that pinned down. And again, members of the general public. Um, house and street histories here often when people have very specific things in lockdown, people start to notice a little bit more on their doorsteps, so we've got a uh, spike in uh, inquiries about, you know, what is this, did you know about that, uh, which is very, very nice um, to have that engagement and often be able to kind of input a little bit more to them, but also you know, in some instances finding out completely new, very interesting, important um, sites of you know, historic environmental importance through, through, their, um, through their inquiries. And yeah, just in general, it's a virtuous circle, I think, of, you know, the more information you receive, the more information goes into the HR, the better the HR is, and then the better the information comes into the HR. People become more informed about the historic environment, be that, you know, from members of the general public, from society members, through to uh, HEP team and partners um, within and without the council. Uh, yeah, they're able through that data and you know, more, of course, uh, to safeguard what's out there in the historic environment. So, you know, all around benefits. So. In terms of what else comes out of the HCR team, we have uh, blog posts on Exploring Surrey's Past website. You may have seen these. Um, they span all sorts from uh, Black history through to um, Tony's just posted on uh, things to do with planning policy and uh, HDR searches um, relation to planning applications. So do take a look at that if you haven't done so before. You will have seen a few, I hope, um, publication uh, pieces uh, by myself and other members of the HDR team published in the likes of the Bulletin and the series past 
We've also done one or two uh, SIAS events over the years, um, speaking specifically on uh, HR data for um, projects the HR has done. Special projects in recent years included uh, Andrew Beerlove's work on the World War II defence lines across the county. Um, just before lockdown, we completed uh, in 2020, we completed a report from uh, of our work doing the historic landscape survey of Lagan Park in South Godston out in uh, East Surrey. And uh, actually only in the past month, we, uh, we did a survey on a possible uh, unknown Bronze Age barrow um, in the county, which we um, made along with another site much later, much more recent vintage, uh, we think it's looking for, for uh, listing or scheduling is, is appropriate. Almost there. Um, volunteering and work placements. Um, Pre-COVID, we had the ability uh, to host short-term work experience placements that's come into abeyance rather over recent, more recent years. Um, looking at potentially resuming that and uh, also more regularly, so weekly volunteering um, based at our working offices. And you know, tack on to this, I'd say, um, you know, also looking in perhaps in the future to engage with um, certain particular groups within uh, in society and members of those who have a particular interest in a particular period or a particular part of the county to maybe volunteer some of their time and their expertise to enhance our data um, for those those periods and those locations um, and really something that is you know, potentially a Enormous, enormous value. Um, uh, lastly, you know, to find out more, um, probably seen already, um, web reference made to those web pages. So, so we have web pages on the County Council website. Um, we have a section of this Exploring Surrey's Past, in addition to our blog posts. And finally, at the bottom there, HR at Surrey CC. Um, so our e team email address. So any inquiries, any reports, anything uh, of any nature that you'd like to communicate to us, then uh, that's the best address to use. My voice didn't give up. Thank you very much.